It's Ollie from History Profiles, and today's video will be about a woman named Alice Kittler, an alleged sorceress, and the first woman to be accused of witchcraft in Ireland, which would spark a witch hysteria that lasted in Europe for another 300 years, and would leave thousands of people dead. Anyway, let's get into the video. First, let's look at Alice's early life. She was born in Ireland, in a county called Kilkenny, in the year 1263. She was the only child of a Flemish family of merchants who had settled in Ireland. She was born into wealth and would have every advantage a rich child would have at that time, such as an education and later in life, connections to influential and wealthy men. Not much is known about the childhood of Alice, but as a young woman she got married in 1280 at around the age of 17 to William Outlaw, who was a merchant and moneylender. And so the sinister case of the sorceress from Kilkenny begins. Alice would soon have a son, who she named William, after the boy's father. As her son grew to become a man, he would become her chief business partner, participating in the family business. However, Alice's husband, William Outlaw, would soon grow ill and die just as his son was becoming a man in 1302, Alice would marry Adam Blund of Callan, another wealthy moneylender. Alice and her new husband, Adam, were briefly accused of killing her first husband, but that was mainly talk from the common people of Kilkenny who were jealous of Alice due to her being a wealthy woman. In 1307, Adam Blund, Alice's second husband, would forsake all his legitimate children by rewriting his will and leaving all of his goods and earthly possessions to Alice's son, William. What would possess a man to do such a thing? Did he have a falling out with his children and prefer Alice's son? Or was something more sinister at work? Adam would soon die mysteriously after declaring that he was leaving everything to his stepson. Alice and William would profit greatly from this, inheriting jewels, land and property. By 1309, Alice had found and married her third husband, a man called Richard de Valle. He was a wealthy landowner. The marriage lasted for seven years and the pattern would continue. Richard died mysteriously in 1316. Alice would then take legal action against Richard's son for withholding her widow's dower. In 1324, Alice would marry her fourth and final husband, named Sir John Le Poer, a knight. However, some years after the marriage to Alice, the wealthy knight showed signs of illness. His hair and nails fell out, and he would become weak and sickly. Sir John Le Poer was no fool, and he told his family that he may have been poisoned. Nevertheless, after his death, all of his property and belongings were left to Alice and her son, William. The resentment of the common people in Kilkenny and the children of all her ex-husbands was growing more and more. Talk of the town was that Alice was a witch and worshipped Satan. That is why she had been rewarded with earthly riches. The stepchildren from all her previous marriages had their ancestral homes robbed from them and had nothing to inherit from their fathers as it all had been left to Alice and her son. Naturally, they could not believe that this had happened so many times, and they came to the conclusion that she was a sorceress. They accused her of using poison and sorcery to cut the lives of their fathers short and tamper with their minds in order for her to inherit all of the money. Alice's stepchildren would bring their accusation of sorcery to Richard Ledrede, the Bishop of Ossory. Alice and her accomplices were accused of a number of things. I shall now read the charges. Denying the faith of Christ and the church, cutting up animals to sacrifice to demons at crossroads, holding secret meetings at night in churches to perform black magic, using sorcery and potions to control Christians, possession of a familiar who was a lesser demon of Satan, and finally, the murder of her four husbands. 
the bishop would take these accusations seriously, as not only were the accusations sinister in nature, it was also very believable how all the stepchildren from different fathers had none of their family wealth, and there were documents proving it, as everything had been left to Alice and her son. The bishop was very suspicious of Alice, and he would do anything he could to bring down an alleged heretical sorceress. However, this would prove no easy task. Alice had now accumulated the estates of four very wealthy men, and she had influence and friends in high places due to this vastness of wealth. The bishop called to have Alice arrested, but in turn, the opposite happened. The bishop was swiftly arrested and thrown into jail to await questioning from Arnold Le Poer, a relative of the late Sir John Le Poer, who had taken a liking to Alice. However, the bishop's investigation proved lawful and he only remained in jail for 16 days, but this setback from the investigation was just a sign of what was to come. Upon the bishop's release, he wrote to the Chancellor of Ireland, demanding that Alice be arrested and questioned until her trial. However, the Chancellor was named Roger Outlaw, and this was Alice's brother-in-law from her first marriage. The Chancellor would soon ask the Bishop to drop the case, but he would not. The Bishop would then excommunicate Alice, expelling her from the church. The common people of Kilkenny now hated Alice, and she no longer felt safe, as she may face arrest or justice from the public. She fled to Roger Outlaw's house. The Bishop would then accuse him of harbouring a heretic, but to no avail, he was cleared of any wrongdoing. Alice seemed untouchable. Whenever the bishop would get further into his investigation and closer to her arrest, it would always backfire. The bishop now exhausted and furious would begin to play dirty. He arrested Petronia de Meath, who was a maidservant of Alice, and she was charged with being an accomplice. She was then tortured and confessed to sorcery. She confessed to committing heresy, sacrificing to demons, communing with demons, making love and hate potions to corrupt Christians, helping Alice murder her past husbands, and engaging in a sexual affair with a demon. The confession was dark and sinister. Here is part of Petronia's confession. By the crossroads, outside the city, she had made an offering of three male birds to a certain demon, whom she called Robert, from the depths of the underworld. She had poured out the bird's blood, cut the animals into pieces, and mixed the intestines with spiders and other black worms like scorpions, with a herb called milfoil, as well as other herbs and horrible worms. She had boiled the mixture in a pot with the brains and clothes of a boy who had died without a baptism, and with the head of a robber who had been decapitated. Petronia said, she had several times, at Alice's instigation, and once in her presence, consulted demons, and received answers. She had consented to a pact, whereby she would be the medium between Alice and the said demon. She said that with her own eyes, she had seen a demon in three shapes, in the form of three men all in black, and each carrying an iron rod in hand. This apparition happened in daylight, in the presence of Dame Alice, and, while Petronia was watching, the apparition had intercourse with Alice. After this damning confession, Petronia was flogged and then tied to a stake, and was consumed by the flames. Alice, however, remained unscathed, and fled to England with Petronia's daughter, where they vanished from history and were never heard from again. So, do you think Alice was simply an unfortunate woman who outlived all four of her husbands and was accused of sorcery? Or was something more sinister at work, as she acquired all the wealth of those husbands and didn't share it with any of her stepchildren? Was this woman simply greedy? Or was she a sorceress who was guilty of murder? And so much more. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, 
make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you next time for another one. Bye.